I, I was kind of shocked when I saw that uh, you had been drafted into rugby. Was that a choice or was that just an assignment bestowed upon you to revive rugby in Nigeria? Yes, that uh, whether it was bestowed on me or I actually went for it, um, it could be mixture because um, I did not want to be idle immediately after my retirement in 2021. Uh, therefore, uh, when the elections were to be held, I met the major stakeholders that were into the programs and. Um, they told me I should come to rugby, and um, I told them, okay, it, it was a challenge at that time, and I took it up, because um, uh, whatever thing we need to do, I'm just a sports administrator, and I should, be, I should not shy away from challenges for many of the sports federations. Um, rugby is not exactly that popular sport in Nigeria. Uh, when you talk of rugby in Africa, you talk of the South Africans, the East Africans. But here in Nigeria, rugby, uh, sometimes, uh, let me use the words when I was uh, killing Jabe. <laughs> so, so, how has it been for, you know, rugby sounds like cricket to us. It's not our traditional sport. But here we are. Um, rugby, one of the reasons why we said we, we wanted to meet you was rugby started getting into the news um, the Black Stallions the 12 man squad for Paris 2024 the Abuja Rugby Federation or team and we started having um, mentions and uh, funny enough uh, one person who has been a sports psychologist Robinson Okosu also popped up in rugby now tell me how how is this federation that has been in obscurity in serious developmental stage, and I don't use the word loose, loosely, serious developmental stage, has started popping up as a headline a topic in Nigeria sports circles? Uh, I'm not actually a rugby player. Mm. I've never played rugby. You, you, you don't look like a rugby player. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when the uh, responsibility was bestowed on me by all the stakeholders in the country, at least majority of them, I took up the mantle and uh, told them that um, we need to build rugby together. Mm. At that point in time, Nigeria was under ban um, due to some administrative uh, lapses on, on the side of the, of the board. But thank God, uh, when we came in, we were able to fulfill the conditions for them to lift the ban on Nigeria, especially with the cooperation of the ministry. The most important yes, thing for them was for us to have a constitution, which we were able to have. Um, after the passage of that constitution or the approval, I, which was approved by the international body, approved by the NOC, and approved by the ministry. So we now looked around people that have interest, that are passionate, about sports. Uh, there are many of them all over the country, but you cannot get um, everybody to come into that place. And uh, so we decided to bring in people of like minds, and um, so far so good. We've been able to get things going. Uh, we were able to get um, a very strong marketer in Nigeria, SYDA which assisted us to get some people... I'm, I'm going to jump in there because I, I have been one person who has been very critical about branding and marketing in sports. Um, I, I tackled the Nigerian Football Federation on the ability to market our national teams. And here you are uh, with a nascent, I won't put it, it seems with nascent federation and you're already talking about professional marketing company being part of your team. Now, that, uh, not because you're here, that shows a kind of focus that I have always asked for. Um, how did you get a marketing team to join, yes. to join the Rugby Federation? Um, if you... um, 
the main financier of sports in Nigeria is the federal government through the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sport. Yes. And uh, between you and I, we know that um, we have classes of federations. Mm. There are those who are always winning medals. There are those who are basically at the grassroots level. And there are those who are and not recognized at all. Some that are not even recognized <laughs> at all. Uh, well, that is a quote, uh, depending on who is talking. And um, we found out that the ministry doesn't have the wherewithal to effectively fund all the federations the way they should be funded. And um, we looked around. We needed people with like minds. And then we realized that in South Africa, rugby is a very big game. Very huge. It's a morning spinning sport. So we looked around. We were able to get somebody that has a link in South Africa. And that was how we were able to get SYDA in Abuja. And SYDA linked us with African Sports Connect in South Africa. Mm. Uh, they've been in the country twice. I have been to them once. And they are really working hard. And I can tell you that given, give or take, in the next six months, one year, rugby will be the sport to beat in the country. Apart from that, we have Bugawin, a new lottery organization coming. I heard about that. Yes, Bugawin. Oh, you guys are already we having... Are already, we are already with Bugawin. And uh, I can tell you, with Bugawin, rugby will be turned around in the next, in the next few months and it will never be the same for us we have a lot of programs we intend doing so when you look at people around that have interest and are passionate about that sport it will not be difficult for you to convince them to be part of the team how long have you been the president of rugby i'm asking this I, i'm going somewhere uh two years two years yeah. and already you have been able to make connections with a major player of rugby in Africa, which is South Africa. Mm -hmm. And right now we have spon potential sponsors yeah. who are jumping in on it. Mm -hmm. I'm almost trying to ask you, do you have federation presidents meet? Do you talk to your fellow federation presidents? Well, you do, are do, do, do you guys sit with the minister and address such things? Because Yes. Uh, yes. The, the, the ministry actually encourages the federations to go out and source for fund. Uh, because if you really want to have impact and um, execute your programs, uh, you cannot wait for the ministry. The ministry basically is there to ensure that um, Nigeria is effectively represented at international sports meets. Mm. And um, at the grassroots level, they are also doing their best. However, as a federation, for you to do what is expected of you, for you to, you know, if, if you have a vision, for you to execute that vision the ideas that you have then you need to go out and uh, seek for people with like minds who are interested in uh, doing that business with you and i can tell you like i said buga is in and uh, we are we'll, very soon we'll start bugaring everybody that we need to buga in this country so that rugby will become a household name uh, thank you very much. Um, that is one of the major areas of our focus. Uh, when you talk of grassroots sports, then you can be sure that the ministry is interested, the federation is very much interested, and the sponsors that we're talking to are very much interested in the sustenance of the growth of rugby right from the grassroots level. Um, we can recall that we have six geographical zones. Yes. And in every zone, we have sports officers, we have facility officers, and we have our zonal representatives on the board of the Federation. Uh, we intend using all these arms of um, administration to get to the grassroots. What we are doing at the moment is to get as many equipment as possible. When I talk equipment, we are talking of balls which are not easy to come by. Mm. Uh, rugby is not as expensive as we are looking at it. Uh, it may look elite in nature. Yeah. But um, once these balls are just like we are doing, I have been able to distribute balls to some zones. And then once they get these balls, in turn, the representatives will now engage the schools at the grassroots level. And once this thing gets to the schools at that level, then you can be sure that um, the game will definitely we will sensitize we will sensitize people to be involved in rugby. And apart from that, um, one of our programs, one of the programs we have is to ensure that um, we do grassroots 
sports competitions. We want to have zonal competitions and uh, just like principal's cup. Yes. We are going to do that. Uh, we now bring champions from the zones, maybe two from each zone. We now have 12, maybe in Abuja, Lagos or Kaduna. And when we have that, we are going to have a national champion at that age limit. And uh, once we do that, our elite athletes, uh, like the ladies, are now going to Asaba. Yes. Uh, first week of um, July to have our first national uh, female championship. Uh, immediately after that, we want to start the league. The league is very important. We want to do Super League, Super Six, Super Four, whatever thing we need to call it. We will definitely do it this year. And apart from that, we are going to have international competition we want to have a regional competition where we now bring in ghana togo ivory coast then a republic maybe like four six countries will come together and do this we're already in talks with the uh, rugby africa president uh, mr mensa uh, who fortunately came to office through the support of nigeria we actually nominated him to be oh, we're already playing international politics. Yeah, we're already. I'm, I'm a member of the international body. I, I belong to the Audit and Risk Committee okay. of Rugby Africa. And I'm also the chairman of the Marketing Commission of the Nigerian Olympic Committee. So we have a lot going for us. And I intend using my positions in the, all these other areas to have impact positively on Nigerian rugby. The ministry is doing I all think it I can, am and liking you this call, man like too much. Said, Maybe you could throw a curveball at him. Rugby is not very him. popular. Uh, but concerning we are rugby to because make it popular to, <laughs> we had to the force it speak. on the neck Maybe of the ministry. We, can hear, yes, we are here to stay. Yeah, uh, uh, our, uh, uh, what do you think? What do you think so doing. far here? Sir? We are going to Mauritius yeah. in another uh, world. At some point, the ministry is really giving to But unfortunately, the cash backing is not there in all ministries at the moment. No fund has been used to any ministry. We have approval from uh, the ministry. Like no said, matter how, years, how much is given to us, we are also looking outside to, find to make sure we are meant for this. Um, um, as I'm talking to you, know, our team is ready. So they have been in the UK. Now. They have been involved in competitions in the UK. You know, building up to this uh, malicious thing. And uh, we are, honestly, I can tell you that we are ready. We are good to go. We need players as usual, but the guys are really determined. And their parents are coming with them. They are coming with them to Malaysia. So I can tell you, the ministry is doing everything possible to assist us. They, they can Nigeria. give us the enabling environment. The office yes, we are using thank you very much. belongs to the ministry. Recall. We don't pay for land. As we don't pay for we water. As we board, don't pay for uh, facilities. We so, went to and Kenya also, for the Kenya. They are giving seven. us a space. Immediately, we want to have our own mini stadium. Was two within and it was the stadium of the ministry. B. Also, uh, they have shown us the seminar, land, and it is now left for us to get every single place so that we can develop that place. So and the ministry uh, is really, also really doing a lot. lot. And then um, I can tell you specifically that the Honorable uh, Minister Chief uh, Secretary was personnel. instrumental to it was me of the ministry. Um, so the becoming mini president of rugby, he actually encouraged me to go. And he, I, I can remember when he said, Are, hmm, there are many issues in that rugby. Do you think you can cope? I said, sir, with your backing, I'm sure I'll be able to cope. And we thank God today we are coping gradually. Uh, the sore point I'm still having is on the clubs or the proprietors of clubs in the country um i, I was been, coming to that because yes. i know abuja rob, rugby yeah uh, you guys are not in tandem i don't i don't have any issue with anybody mm. i don't have issue with any club the important thing you see um you know when you are in a society there are rules and regulations yes and um it is always good for us to follow the rules and regulations so that we don't run foul of the law people can keep quiet because we just want things to go on like that um, the international body asked me a pertinent question when our constitution was presented to them they asked me where are the club owners where are the clubs yes where are the where clubs? is their space on the board of the federation and i said look all the clubs in the country belong to states mm. and when they come in through the states they come down to national and I told the club owners, I said, come, get yourselves together. We cannot put everybody in the board. But no. when you bring yourselves together, give us one or two persons. Then we can As put it in the constitution yes. so that they will be part of the board. But they cannot come together probably because of ego, because of pride. I wouldn't know what is wrong with all of them. But this is a very important sector 
of rugby in Nigeria. We want them to be together. We want them to come together. It's like we don't want to start wielding the big stick. Mm. If we do any memo from the office and send it to the ministry, I can tell you most of these clubs that are jumping up and down will not be allowed to do what they are doing. But we just want them to do their thing, develop rugby because they are the people, you know, making us feel proud. Maybe, maybe they they didn't expect that rugby would um, um, get to this level so fast. Maybe they didn't believe in the project. Maybe there has been a lot of failed promises. Maybe right now uh, they are still. I, I, I play the devil's advocate here. Yes. Maybe that's the problem for them. I agree. I agree that. We have a lot of issues in rugby. You know, there are some people that feel they know it all. There are some people that feel they are in charge. Maybe they feel you are not a rugby person. I'm not a rugby person. person yeah. But listen, like I always tell them, you are the owners of rugby. I'm a sports administrator. Tomorrow I can decide to leave rugby and go to another place. Mm. But we need to come together while I'm still there. God give her that power, give her that authority. When I'm still there now, I am just a partner. I want them to come on board so that we sit down and do this. When we come together, can a single strand of um, uh, broom sweep the room? It is not possible. You need to put everything together so that it can be more effective. So I want everybody to come together. I, I am just a president in code who is a coordinator of your activities. That is the basic thing. That is what I'm just doing there. So we want them to come together. Have you said something? Uh, Mr. Dabula, you said something and um, I want us to hit on it. Um, how can we get rugby away from being state-owned and get private sector to, to, to come into Because if you look at it, the problem we're having with football is the fact that it's very that owned by the state. How can we not follow that template and ensure that that rugby is a raw sport coming to Nigeria we do not make the same mistakes football made in its inception relying on state governments to run the clubs um no so the state governments are not running your clubs for you for example if i register is a, a rugby club i spend my money i do everything for them i will just register with that maybe if i'm if i'm in lagos i will register with lagos state so that they know that we exist in lagos state if, for example, I have something to do outside Lagos State, I will let them know. You see, that no matter what we do, we need, we still need that government backing. We need that government support. Not that the states will be running your rugby for you. If I, for example, I have a plan to to invite all rugby clubs in the country. We want to have rugby championship clubs at that club's level. You will come as clubs, but then when you are coming as clubs, maybe we have like five clubs from Lagos State. Oh, where is this club from? Lagos State, mm -hmm. you, know, you, you are not jumping from heaven to come and take part in sports. Mm. If, for example, we have National Youth Games or National Sports Festival, and you have some of your athletes, you cannot come as a club to play in the National Sports Festival. Your best players must be infused into that state team so that you give these children opportunities to excel in life. So that being members of a state team does not stop anything from you i was a member of union bank sports club and i played hockey through union bank i was able to represent nigeria when i was in the university so it, that does not mean that i be, i belong to lagos state but i still belong to union bank and i represented lagos state because i belong to union bank so it doesn't take anything away from the from this from the clubs no no state is running your club for you you are running your club but it is always good to have an umbrella body in the state if we call okay all the clubs in lagos state we want to see you we we'll bring the director in we we'll bring the commissioner in it's just for them to have um, a feel that yes we have all these people we can engage in this competition we can engage and if you need any help at all from government you have to go through them if you if you are telling me that okay i know the governor of a particular state we can go straight there those people can frustrate you so why don't we come together and then we do what we need to do i get your point states are not controlling clubs we only need you know for accountability we, we want to know the number of clubs in the country how do i know 
I have to go to the sports association. Uh, please, how many rugby clubs do you have in Lagos State? How many do you have in Kaduna State? They must have that register. They must have that record. That is just the purpose. Not that the states or the national body wants to control. We are not controlling anybody. You have been there before I came in. And you continue to be there when I leave. So Wait, it's, it's simple. What is the contract with Steve Lewis? Is he part-time? Is he freelance? Is he come and help us? Is he working for us? Is he What is it? Um, it is every it is it is everything. Um, you know, uh, in Nigeria, uh, why did I say it is everything? Lewis is coming in without any salary. Lewis is coming in because he loves to be part of our development in Nigeria. He was there before he took us to the Commonwealth level, and when we looked around. Um, when you are going for competition in rugby, the coach must be at a certain level before that coach can lead a team. We don't have such coach in the country. All our coaches are either on level one or level two. The same thing goes for medical. The medical personnel that we have in the maybe we have only maybe one or two in this country that can go with us for any international engagement. So Louis agreed. In fact, agreed to sacrifice his time. He's a, he, he told us that any time he's on leave, he'll be ready to follow our national team to anywhere we're going to. He will give us his time. We will only be responsible probably for his uh, air ticket, hotel accommodation. He's not asking us for any money. And you will recall that he's also a consultant in New York to some rugby uh, clubs. Mm. And he has been doing well. It is because of his, um, of his pedigree. That is why we agreed, and the ministry approved this. It's not costing us much money as people are envisaging. It is more or less to come and assist us in developing rugby. Okay, it's 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 the 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 yes, yes, it is not. Then you see, my office is open 24 hours. Uh, if you want any information, you can come. The office is always open. Another thing I would like to say is our coaches our officiating officials should help themselves there are courses online from rugby africa from world rugby that they can take advantage of but they will always be waiting for um the national body to call them together nobody will keep calling you together if you love that game then you should be more responsible to develop enough. yourself to develop yourself and once you develop yourself you are not only useful to nigeria you are going to be useful to yourself and be useful to africa when i went to ghana all their elite athletes all their elite rugby players were involved in officiating of the of the competition but Nigeria is not like that. You, you don't think because you played rugby, you can automatically become a referee. It is not like that. We have platforms. You have level 1, level 2, level 3. So you need to take advantage of all those things. They are online for you to do. But when it gets to like level 2, level 3, then the federation will come in. We can bring in the officials from outside the country. And we've been talking to them. They are ready to come. So once once we get to that level, we can, we can play around with as many officials as possible. Then our coaches don't just say, hey, I've been coaching you for 20 years. So what? What is your qualification? <laughs> if you don't have that qualification, Rugby Africa will not allow you to take any team outside the shores of your country. Thank you. Okay, so the Rugby Federation has announced announced uh, not so long ago the 12-man team that will be doing a whole lot. Um, uh, 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 why the Black Stallions? Why, 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 why do... Should I'm be not, I'm not green stallions. Should be an <laughs> eagle lad. <yeah. laughs> we're always flying. Why are we horse right now? Well, <laughs> Why are we talking to us? I met I, I met that the name has been there before I came in. Just like the logo. If you look at it very well, we changed that logo to because of branding. We looked at other countries in the world and uh, our marketers felt we should do something more appealing to the sponsors. And um, apart from that, black stallions, mm, we are stallions now. We, we get horses for Nigeria. That That's is all. power. We are very strong. So we will still go along with that name. And if there is any need for any change, all stakeholders will be involved and we can do that accordingly. But um, on the issue of Mauritius, when we looked around, we found out that most of our players in the country have not been involved, actively involved in competitions and intensive training because i see most of those who have been called up are not are from uk are from the uk they are nigerians from uk um 
some of them left these shows to go to UK. If you, we have almost 100 players in UK, mm. and about three of them are actually playing for United Kingdom. Oh. So we decided to make the the boys in UK the hub of the team, and then we 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 picked two from Nigeria, one from United States of America. Mm. So we are putting all these guys together, and uh, we are really really hoping because they have been exposed. They play almost every weekend and they've been involved in competitions and uh, this story will change the moment we start our league then we can now tap onto the various things and this is where the clubs come in if we start the league we want all the clubs to be involved you, you can't stay aloof you know if you have an enemy you don't run away from that enemy because if you run away from the enemy you wouldn't know how to tackle him mm. so you move closer to the federation let us see how we can solve our issues together it is very important uh, nobody is an island. You bring your idea, I bring my idea, then we can move forward. Look at what Crawford is doing for us in the country today. Crawford was able to buy tickets for the for the two boys, or sorry, for the two players from Nigeria. When we appealed to him that we, we were not having money, we needed to get the cash from the ministry. So he was able to loan us and buy the tickets for the two players. So those, that, that is the kind of thing we are looking forward to. We want people to come in. Let us join hands together. It is not always about money. You have ideas. Bring your ideas. Let us work together and get the get rugby going. Okay, so um, we have uh, the tournament that these guys have been called for, the 2024 Paris Olympic Games pre-qualifier. Yeah. And then by the month of September, um, the African Cup 7s will be in Zimbabwe. Um, Nigerians were very prayerful, just like you said, and hopeful and expect full. Let me use all the full uh, in it. Uh, uh, do you? Are we going to make it to Paris? Yes. Um, you know, it's it's a process. It's a journey, and uh, we are starting. Oh, uh, is this for experience? No, not for experience. We really want to go there and make a statement. Um, I don't believe. Uh, Togo can beat us. I don't believe Republic of Benin can beat us. You know. I, if if you mention Kenya, I will tell you we we can't we don't stand any chance against Kenyan team. If you talk for of now. South Africa for now, we don't stand it. But by the time we start, you know, it, it's a gradual thing. Well, if people before me have been doing this all along, then we wouldn't be here. We would have gone far ahead. But now we're starting, and I can tell you, in another one two years, Nigeria will be a strong force in rugby in Africa. So. We, the guys in UK, uh, they are determined. We've been talking to them. We are, they, are, they have been motivated. Their parents are coming with them. It's a pride for them to represent the country, to wear that green, white, green jersey, as well as the two players from here and the, the, one the guy the, from the, US. US. I, I learned that is is a very fast player, and that is exactly what we need. I can tell you, we are not just going for jamboree. We are not just going for mere present representation. We are going there to qualify at this pre-qualifying stage. Then we now go for the qualifying proper. When we now meet the big guys. Yes. So we are looking forward to all that. And I can tell you, we will definitely do well. You can mark my words. Okay. Um, I have been, just like Donso said, we have...